Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the Top 30. Uh, if you are joining me thinking that this is going to be just another uh, top list of comic books, I, I would say that this is even better. And it's only better than that because of the guest that I have joining me in this episode. Uh, I guarantee that this will be the best 30 minutes of your comic book day, hands down, without question. And I'd like to bring in this episode's guest, the comic doctor himself, Kevin. How are you? Good. Hi. How are you doing, Brent? I'm doing very well, thanks. And I always like to refer to you, I don't know if you notice this in chat, as the comic doctor, not the just the comic doctor. I, I always like uh, put the emphasis on the because um, I'm a huge fan of yours. Okay. Uh, I have books behind me that you've worked on and, and yeah. just done excellent work with that I appreciate so much. And uh, it's such a joy to have you on this episode. So I really appreciate you being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here talking now, about comic I, books. I, yeah. Now, I know you, you have a, a, a really uh, awesome following on social media and YouTube uh, at, at Comic Doctor. But also, uh, if just in case they, there are folks that aren't familiar with you and your services, would you mind just taking a minute or two and just talking about who is the Comic Doctor? Well, I'm the comic doctor. I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm Kevin Polidano. I'm, a com I'm the comic doctor. I started the comic doctor, comic pressing and comic cleaning business. Oh, oh, back in 2011, I believe it was now. By God, it went by fast. And uh, I've been pressing books and cleaning books and submitting books to CGC uh, since around that time. And uh, yeah, it's the, the business has grown exponentially since that time. I now have a standalone shop here in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, where I where I work. Uh, I have, I work alongside two other uh, conservators slash pressers and uh, yeah, it's been a, a great ride and I'm happy to uh, continue offering this service to uh, comic book enthusiasts all over North America. Excellent. Awesome. Wait, before we get started though, with all of our rigorous uh, questioning and, and I wish you the best of luck over the next 30 minutes in dealing oh, with boy. me. Uh, yeah, no pressure, but uh, we have to start off with the most important question. And I, that I, is, I'm married. Direct, I'm married. Oh no! Oh, that, that's that, well. That's very important. <laughs> Maybe to a certain segment uh, of our audience, that's important. Yeah, but uh, even sure. more than that, I need to know: direct or newsstand? Direct. That is correct. I just, I've never been into that. You know, the direct, the newsstand, the even the Canadian price variants. I can see the appeal or the desire to go after these more elusive copies of the exact same book, but I've always just been happy with the direct copy and actually growing up at the, you know, the local comic book store, I, I was buying the direct copies. So I don't know. I, I just, I just don't see the reason is spending. I mean, some of these books can go for some correct and fetch some crazy money because it has a slightly different cover. I'm just yeah. happy to have the copy. Exactly. Yeah, uh, that makes sense to me. I would agree. The, the next part that we want to get into is a little <clears throat> provocative. Some may say it's uh, it's hot and spicy, but I wanted to get into this just to kind of line up with the comic doctor and, and, sure. and your spicy personality. Um, but what we wanted to talk about first is grading standards. Now, when I was on your show, right. uh, we talked about things like slabs and what could CGC do to, to kind of improve that process? And I felt like what ended up happening is there was also a conversation that was related in terms of 9.9 .9 pre-screens. And then there was a whole kind of thread about that and debate online. But what I started to think about is really just grading standards in general. And so not so much is 9.9 going to be the new 9.8. It's more of just have you over time seen CGC change how strict they are with defects or maybe maybe looking at certain uh, elements of a comic itself and and have you seen any changes in the past or recently I mean that's a question you got to ask Matt Nelson or some people over at CGC I think having submitted I, I submit close to 4 to 500 books a month to CGC so have I seen uh, you know, waves of uh, loose grading and waves of tighter grading. Yeah, I think so. I think it happens. But you got to remember there are, I would think there are hundreds of graders over there. I've talked to other people who, who've told me there's 100 graders at any one time working on a book or on different books. So how are you going to guarantee everyone's going to see the, the, you know, everyone's, I'm sure they've got a book or a list of what to look for. 
but everyone's going to look at a book, you know, subjectively. So yeah, that's a really hard question. Do I think CGC has officially changed the grading standards since the day they opened? No, no, I don't think. I think they've looked at comics the exact same way since day one. But again, when you have a hundred different graders or a hundred plus different graders mm. with different experience, you know, grading books, and it becomes hard. I think I don't want to go off off topic there because it's a great question. But then it's, it's it even goes back to the you know, when I was getting tons of slabs coming in with micro cracks along the seams, well, how come that was happening over the course of two months or three months, but it never mm -hmm. happened before that. And it didn't happen after they rectified the problem because I I'm pretty sure. And again, I don't know the inner workings. Of uh, we've had this conversation before too. I wish I could go there and they could show me around. And I could see, and I could better answer that question if I could talk to them about this sort of thing. Right. Um, but I think there's such a turnover of employment there too, I would think. And maybe that, I, I, when I was getting those cracks and those slabs, I swore, I said, somebody knew was working that encapsulation machine because it wasn't happening before. And it wasn't always happening, but there was a consistent two or three months where there get, was getting a lot of those. But I don't think their standards per se has changed. I talked to Steve Borak the other day about that on the phone. We we're talking about grading standards. And he was very strict in saying how they were looking at each and every book, what, what a 9.8 would have, what a 9.6 would have, what a 9, you know. And that was how they started. That's how they kind of launched that back then. I don't think it has changed. I think because, again, you don't have one person grading all the books. You're going to get a variety of grades. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that makes sense. I think you, you mentioned earlier that you 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 have maybe experienced some waves of, of either looseness or tightness. What I'm trying to figure out is the current issue that I'm seeing is specifically around corners and corner wear and sharpness and things like that. And we'll get into some some particulars around comic book defects here in a, in a moment. But the, one of my working theories is that they're now becoming a much more stricter on corners than they were before. And I have slabs to prove it where I've got 9.8s with some, some roundedness. And now I have uh, 9.8s with the spine ticks, color breaking ticks, but the sh uh, corners are super sharp. Um, and so I'm trying to, as, as somebody who's like, you know, pre-screening their own books and trying to figure out, are these books that I should send to you for pressing? That's where I'm trying to figure out where I've got a stack of books here and there. And it's like, which books give me the best chance to give you an opportunity to improve the books that will ultimately get the 9.8. If you're dealing with, uh, you know, corners, like you're mentioning, or spines, if the books, I, I take it the books have already been pressed or are they just... Or no, like when you're no, when noticing these. No, not necessarily. Could be for okay. a pre screen, but yeah, for the most okay. part, like yeah, if I'm looking at at some some maybe uh, what I would consider to be pressable defects, but the corner has corner wear and maybe even some softening, something that that a press is not going to get out. That's where I'm like, should I even bother? Because I know CGC is what I think is they're becoming stricter on corners, but I'm not sure. You've also got to take into consideration what book. Like what vintage of book you're talking about. If you're talking a book that right. just came out this last couple of years, they're extremely strict on, on corners and of course, spine ticks and those sorts of things. But a book from say 30 years ago or 40 years ago, they're going to be a little less, I think, stringent on. Um, they're still strict, but not as strict, right? It's like going back to the golden age. You can see golden age books that are a, a four or five. And you're like, how that, they would never grade a silver age book the same way as this, as this golden age book, right? Right. I'm right. even hearing now with the pulps, the pulps, uh, I've got a few friends that are submitting those and it's like a whole different standard when it comes to pulps, right? Uh, yep. uh, you know, trimming and everything, it's almost acceptable when it comes to pulps. That's a whole other story. Wow. I don't want to get into that. Okay. Well, right? see, this, but, this is what happens when, when we start talking about comic books and all of that is we start branching off of the timeline. Yep. And what we need to do is, is we need to respect the sacred timeline. The sacred timeline. All right. So now that we're back on the sacred timeline, what I wanted to kind of get into, is, and you were touching on this, is your favorite era of comic to press because you were covering pulps and golden age. But like, are there books that you get from a particular age and you're like, man, the, these are kind of in the sweet spot of what I do and what eras or even publishers or anything about a book? Um, what, what types of books do you look forward to working on? Anything in the, uh, you know, bronze, silver, and gold, I love. Even the pulps. Look, the pulps are a pain in the rear end. They really are. But if they're if they're properly prepped prior to pressing, the results are fantastic on those as well. So, yeah, anything prior to the new paper. You know, the new paper is a real pain. Although they press out quite well, too. But, I mean, honestly, I mean, 
you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, like those magazines, they press out amazing. You know, uh, you know, Bronze Age books like uh, Hulk 181, they press out fantastic. Uh, and all Silver Age books <laughs> press out great too, you know. I just pressed out Amazing Fantasy 15. It, it, it just night and day with a good press and the proper preparation. Um, so I, I don't think I have a favorite era. I think it's a lot. I, I like old paper. I like old mm -hmm. paper. The modern paper is a little more... You can get great results too, but I don't know. I just, I, I kind of wish they're talking about comic prices right now. I think they're talking about bringing the prices back down on some of the Marvel saying they're going to bring their prices down. I'm like, go back to newsprint. <laughs> That's what I want to see. No. Totally. No. Oh, you well, agree. Right. There you go. I know. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, if, plus you get the smell of the paper mm. too. <laughs> yeah. That's always great. Uh, now, do you, is the the paper not to get into like the science of sure. paper, but do you feel like, particularly like, let's say the Silver Age paper, is it just because it, it kind of has short term memory in that if there is some sort of creasing or folding, it's able to kind of bounce back and react to a press? Uh, because part of me think would think it's just because it's been aged so long that it's almost the opposite that that a newer book that has a crease would be easier to press out but then like you said the paper is uh is so bad and so thin so it, is it really just that you you see that i guess maybe the newsprint is just you know more willing to work with your methods oh yeah 100 percent. the, the okay. paper is paper it's real paper i don't i don't know if you want to call today's comic books purely paper i mean the, the different uh right. the, with the different inks they're using now too are almost like probably like polymers or whatever right there it's plastics again I don't, I don't know the science of it myself uh to be honest but i mean the you know old paper just responds really really well to a press and modern books do too i'm not saying it but it's a different it's a different it's a different attack right i just prefer working on the old stuff more so yeah makes sense now yeah. one of the things that i love about watching your videos is you do pretty much live cgc unboxing you're opening books that customers have sent you and what, mm -hmm. what i've noticed is there's a lot of times where certain books uh will come up and these are what i would consider to be you know very mainstream keys like like big books 9.8s and you and what what i like is that you're like another one of these, another one of these, which I think is a testament to the confidence that your customers have in you. Correct. But I think what, what I'm generally curious about is the comic books that you've seen the most or or like the, not necessarily like a, a, a top list, but what comics do, do you almost like your opening box? You're like this book again, like what are those that you see time and time again? Again, that kind of goes along with whatever's hot at the moment. Like, I mean, uh, what movies coming out or what announcements are happening, right? Like right now, I'm seeing a lot of Wolverine books like Hulk 81s mm -hmm. all the time. I'm seeing Wolverine number one, both limited series as well as the, the solo series from 1988. Like almost on every unboxing, I'm seeing those. I'm starting to see an uptick on New Mutants 98, of course, again with the Deadpool 3 uh, movie you know, everyone's so hotly anticipating it. So we're starting to see that. On the DC side, a book I'm starting to see again. Again, I, this is a very common book would be like Omega Man 3. Like that's starting to pop up more frequently as well too. I have a feeling we're going to start seeing some more Superman books pretty soon with uh, the whole legacy. I think that's going to start happening. We really, you know, it's really all these speculation YouTube channels that kind of, I'm not saying it, they're the only reason why people go out and buy these books. But, it, you know, when movies come out, like when Morbius came out, man, it was like ASM 101 all the time. I was inundated with 101 ASMs. But books I always see, like constantly, like other aside from like specific like uh, issues, Amazing Spider-Man all the time, of course. Mm -hmm. X-Men are pretty popular too, especially the John Byrne run right now. A lot of X-Men books. Uh, and you'll note, if you do watch my my unboxings, you're going to notice that, yeah, Marvel is like the, <laughs> it's the mainstay. I mean, you'll get like for every 10 Marvel books, you'll get maybe one DC, right? Interesting. Yeah. Right. If someone was to say maybe they're not, they're kind of familiar with pressing mm -hmm. and they're now becoming familiar with with you, the comic doctor, and they're interested in in submitting books, but they've never had books pressed before is there anything that you could tell them maybe to alleviate any fears uh, about having their books potentially altered now of course in a positive way hopefully in a good way with, with a with a positive outcome but th there's there there is when i first started to think about pressing mm -hmm. it to me it seems a little scary 
Um, so it, are, are there maybe some bits of advice that you could give out to folks that want to send books to you? Well, there's always risks involved with, with anything you do with your comics. It's paper, guys. It's paper. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy to report that problems seldom arise, honestly. It's, it's a very safe process. Um, I've developed a process which is pretty darn safe. The dry cleaning we do is quite benign, actually. It's very gentle. Uh, and the pressing is, like I said, we we are very careful with you know the pressure and what have you to make sure we get the best results while keeping the book intact and and, and not having any problems. But that being said, what you want to do when you're picking up, you know, selecting books to send off to uh, for for pressing, is you want to maybe start slowly. Now, whether you're using me or a different presser, you want to start slowly. I would send out a few books. You know, I wouldn't send your entire collection out at once. Try it out because putting your little babies into the mail is very nerve wracking. I remember the first time I sent my own books to CGC, I sent an Avengers number one and my ASM 129 and actually an ASM one I had at that time. And I was on pins and needles for the entire time those books were away. And that was just going to CGC. This is before pressing. Um, right. So sending your books out to be to be pressed, I would start, I would do baby set, steps, pick out a maybe five or six or seven books and send them out and try the presser out. Even if it's me, I would I would say start, start that way. Get you know develop a relationship with your presser, make sure the communication is there, and you feel comfortable. I think if you know who you're working with, you're going to feel a little bit better when you're sending your books off. I love all of that advice, particularly the last piece. It's really you know how I've gotten to know you uh, mm -hmm. over the last couple of years, just in terms of there's there's a trust that there, there is. I mean, you said sending the babies through the mail. That's exactly kind of how you feel. And it's like, these are my prized possessions. And I think that having the relationship and getting to know the person that's working with you uh, and, and building up that trust, I mean, just like you would in any business, yes, or business transaction. For sure. But there, there's something about it that's just, an, it, especially as a comic book collector, that's just on another level of sensitivity. Um, and so, yes, I wholeheartedly uh, agree with that advice. Now, if if I am going to take the plunge now, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to send books to you. Are there, in, you, you mentioned maybe starting slow. So what are maybe a, a couple of, of common defects that you would see on a book where you immediately see it and you're like, you know that that's going to come out in the press that those of us sending you books can look for? Yeah, we love finger dents. I love finger dents. Right. I love finger yeah. dents. They're my favorite. When you were talking about, you know, which CGC books you should send to maybe get CPR, crack, pressed, and regraded, and you're looking at the corners and the edges and the spine, I'm okay. That's fine and everything, but look at the face of the book, the face of the cover, the, the, the back. Are there any dents or finger dents? Get the graders notes. Do they mention any bends, uh, non-creasing bends or finger dents? Those are the best. Uh, those babies come out really nice. Be realistic when you're looking at your spines. Guys think that their, their spines are going to look perfect after a press. That's not always the case. It depends on every every spine is tick is a little different. But if color is lost, you're not putting that color back. So yeah, we can smooth out a color uh, a spine tick. We can smooth it out so it's not quite so um, awful looking. <laughs> but if that's that, you're always going to have a little color loss there. It's it's going to be there. So you you got to be realistic too when you're sending your books out. People unfortunately think they're going to turn a you know, four fives into eight to nine eights. Yeah, that's not always the case. Could happen, I suppose, but very rarely. And just be realistic when you're uh, when you're looking over. But uh, we love bends and finger dents. Those are my those are my personal favorite. They come out so nice. Yeah, I love that. And, and again, back to your point too that you just made around improving the books. The goal is to improve them to make them more presentable. And 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 that's kind of the what I've learned too over the years is not to look at a book and say, you know, how do we get this to a nine eight. It's more around this. That is what it is, but but can it be improved? Can it become more presentable? I think a a wonderful example is my uh, my one of my favorite books in my collection, X Men ninety four that you worked on, right? And I had I talked to you about it because of the the nasty spine roll. Um, now you absolutely also improved the grade overall, sure. But when I was going through that process, I was I was literally uh, hoping that the the book would would have the spine corrected which you did fabulously it, it looks amazing so much better where the grade I, I wasn't so much concerned about the final grade I, it was really more around the presentation and i love looking at this book every day when i come in here nice. uh, just because of the great work that you did on the on that spine and and that's a funny thing too because off we do a lot of cpr as you can imagine and um again crack press and regrade and 
I'm going to tell you every single time we crack a book out and we repress it, it, it improves hundred percent, but sometimes the graders don't agree. And sometimes the books come back right. the exact same grade. Sometimes they go down half a grade or a grade. It's, it's really strange. Um, which then goes back to your, your grading standards. Cause sometimes books are overgraded. Yeah, for they, sure. They just are. They just are. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's something that, uh, I wanted to ask you about just because uh, I'm personally struggling with this. We, we talked about some defects. The, the one that I always have a hard time with, and, and I always, lean on the side of caution and just say, you know, it's not worth even trying it, but things that are related to manufacturing. Right. Uh, and again, right now with my dilemma over corners, uh, bindery tears, right? Uh, do you have kind of a, a general, well, I'd love to just get your take on it in general manufacturing versus uh, maybe pressable defects or, or just general typical wear. Um, it's hard for me and I feel like I'm I'm very ex an experienced collector, but it's even hard for me to discern what's manufacturing and what's not. Well, bindery tears, I mo most often see those on fat books, you know, ASM 300, mm -hmm. Avengers Annual 10, you know, uh, first uh, rogue. Those fatter books, simply because of the way they are, because they are fatter, they're putting more pressure on the spine when they're putting the book together, oftentimes have little bindery tears, very minor bindery tears. So it's pretty easy to spot those. Now, when you see little tears on 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 regular comics, thinner thinner books, then it becomes a little more questionable. And you're right, you know, it's good to then seek out the opinion of others. I would, you know, ask your local comic uh, comic shop owner what do they think, or your local presser, or myself. You can always send me a picture and give you my two cents worth. Um, if it's torn, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna you're gonna lose grades for sure on it. You're you're, you're gonna lose points for certain. But on I have seen, you know. ASM 300s again, come back nine eights with those bindery tears. But CGC, yeah. they're, 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 it's their opinion, right? They have to say, yes, that's a bindery tear. I could say it's a bindery tear, but I'm not the one grading the book. So that's the issue. Right. So get, get opinions from a few different people and just keep in mind that when you uh, are sending your books in for grading, that that, that could present uh, you know an obstacle to you getting that nine eight because you have a little tear at the bottom corner, you know? Yeah, I, and back to like developing a positive working relationship with the person that uh, is working with your books, as you mentioned, if you have um, good standing with your presser, <laughs> meaning, you know, it, it goes both ways. You have to be a good customer as well. Um, you know, it, it does make sense to kind of have that and just take a little snapshot, uh, send it, just say, what do you think? Is this, is this manufacturing or general wear? I, I do feel like I can spot it. I think, I don't know, there's part of me that just feels like, manufacturing is still part of the condition of the book and it it's still even though i understand the rules to some degree or at least in theory uh kind of the spirit of it it still baffles me a little bit when i get some books back and i'm like this i can't believe this passed as as manufacturing well that's it again it's and they're, and they're the ones who have that final choice it's i mean we can yeah. we can debate back and forth whether it is a buy a, a manufacturing area or not but it really makes no difference. In the end, it's it's their it's their say. But again, talk to your you know. I, I have clients now. I've started implementing this actually the last six months. I've kind of been very happy to do so. Is is, is meeting with people and actually people like actually I just got a big order in from Calgary, uh, which is very far away. If you're not from Canada, I'm in Toronto. They're in the Calgary. It's quite a quite a distance. Mailed me uh, uh, you know many CGC slabs for potential CPR. So myself and Charlo, we're going to sit down and we're going to go through every single one, just inspect them visually. And determine whether it's a good idea to crack these suckers out or leave them the way they are. And, um, you know, that, that's the sort of, I think, relationship you want to have with your presser, whether you can sit down and discuss it and debate whether or not it's a good idea that, to move forward or not. And the same thing can be said about these manufacturing errors. Is, 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 it, is it worth sending in? Should we take the chance? Should we not? What do you think? Is it even a, is it even a manufacturing error or is it an actual defect that happened after the fact? Again. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. And, and you're talking about a lot of different things that you're doing for customers. Mm -hmm. Would you mind talking a little bit about the different types of services that you have? And I know that I think the best place to kind of get that overview is on your website. But like if, if you could just talk about maybe uh, dry cleaning versus wet cleaning uh, and then also any sort of like pre-screen options or just some, some different uh, ways that you offer pressing services. Well, I get, well, of course, dr of course, dry cleaning and pressing has been going on for forever and ever at my shop. Um, the pre-screening started about 
nine months ago or so, a customer came in. He was a new customer, dropped off a bunch of Captain America books. And they were decent books. You know, they weren't like nine eights, but they were like, you know, eight fives, eights, couple seven fives, couple of nine nine twos. It was a big order. He got them back. And as he was looking through them at the shop, I could see he was kind of disappointed. So I said, what were you expecting? And he said, well, I was expecting, you know, all nine fours or all nine twos, you know, and, and I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And, da, da, da. and after that, I said, listen, when you bring your next batch back. We're going to go through every single book. I'm going to tell you what I think the book's going to get. And then you can make a decision whether you want to send the book or not. And then I started doing that more often. And that's been a big part of my business lately because sending books to CGC, sending books in to get pressed and clean, it's not cheap. And I don't want people to come in and do, you know, send all their books in when they really shouldn't, you know. Um, so this pre-screening option is a, is, a, is a big deal. Now, it's really convenient for people who live close by. They can come to my shop, make an appointment, come and see me. We can sit there and go through the books. Uh, it's a little, little harder for long distance clients. I'll do like, I'll go on Facebook and we'll meet and talk. I've done that with a few clients and they can show me their books on the camera and I can give them my two cents worth. But ultimately they usually send me the books and if they're not to be done, I'll send them back. But uh, that's a big deal. Um, yeah, no, I love that. That's a, that's a great service. And, and I think it helps educate. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Because yep. the, the, the newbie, and I'll tell you, a lot of guys were getting their books clean and pressed or guys that collected like I did back in the 80s into the 90s and then stopped. You know, 20, 30 years goes by, they're rediscovering the hobby. There's pressing, there's cleaning. CGC, what's that? Who's CBCS? Who, what, where? And they don't know. They, they need to, to, to learn and understand what it's all about. And I don't think it's right for someone to come to my shop. I, I wouldn't feel right for someone to come to my shop and give me books that aren't worth the money to have worked on and then take their money and they could they get books back that aren't worth what they put into it you know what i mean so uh, Absolutely. yeah pre-screening has become a big big part of it and, and, I, and i'm happy and you know like you said after you know one or two or three submissions they they figure it out they're starting to get the idea they start they're looking at, and once you've got a whole you know box of cgc slabs like yourself you you look at the books you start figuring out okay this is a this is an eight five okay this is a nine you, you start figuring it out i'm pretty good at looking at a raw book after it's been pressed and clean and say, yeah, this is going to come back between a two and a three. And I'm usually Charlo who works at the shop with me. He's pretty damn good at that too. And, and I, and I think people need to learn about that and I help them get there. So that, that's going to become a pretty big service. You mentioned wet cleaning works. We, we are wet cleaning now for conservation. We don't wet clean every single book. It's got to be a really special book. We'll do aqueous uh, washes to uh, deacidify the book. And we have Nippur at the shop, who's a who's a conservator, an actual an actual conservator with the, the papers and the whole nine yards, and uh, she can deacidify the the pay, uh, the books. And again, but it's not for it's not for every book. I mean, it, it's got to be worth it because it's a it's a long process and it's uh, it's not cheap. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Now, in terms of being educated. <laughs> Something that uh, I, I have been trying to learn from you and right. I've been trying to figure out. And I, I don't know if everybody knows this, but uh, I am in Southern California uh, and you are in Toronto. And yes. to get you books, I have to put them in the mail. Uh, they mm -hmm. have to cross the border. And it's a little bit of an adventure for me. I have tried different services. What would make it easier for me as a U.S.-based customer is... It, it, what what I've tried to do is come up with a consistent process that not only ensures that my books get to you safely, but that makes things easier on you, you know, not dealing with customs, uh, not dealing with books sent to a particular address where you have to pick them up and things like that. And I was wondering if there was anything that uh, you could share in terms of advice for U.S. customers that want to work with you. Well, there's something new coming out for U.S. customers and out of province customers. I'll talk about that in a few minutes, but Generally speaking, um, packing them really well, obviously, and uh, I don't think USPS is the great is a great idea. It makes me very nervous. I feel the same way about Canadians shipping their books to CGC or or when they sell books to American clients using Canada Post, which becomes USPS when it crosses the border. I just feel once Canada Post hands it over to USPS or vice versa, if your something goes wrong and your books are missing, good luck, good luck. Who who used to call? right? USPS right. is going to say, call Canada Post and Canada Post is going to say, call Yeah. Okay. Forget that. So I would recommend a, a courier like FedEx. FedEx to me has been the most consistent. UPS uh, is a little, they're a little shady. <laughs> they like to charge extra fees when the books cross the border. So for Americans sending books into Canada, I would always recommend if you can FedEx. FedEx Express is more money. 
International Express or uh, Priority, you're paying a lot more. But usually when you're paying that extra fee, you're, it's covering all the customs clearance fee. Whereas you send by ground, uh, oftentimes there may be some some slight slight fees you got to pay. Um, but I might, as well, I might as well announce this now. And this is the first place I'm going to announce this. Oh, man. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I was talking to Charlo and Nippur about this, and I wanted to make it much easier for uh, American clients and for out of province clients. I've got a lot of clients from, you know, like I said, from Calgary, Vancouver, Nova Scotia, uh, uh, you know, Quebec. These are Canadian provinces and all across the United States too. So I'm going to try this and see how it works. And if it's, if it's feasible and doable moving forward, any American clients that submit an order of at least 10 uh, exclusive press and clean, and that will equi equivalent to about 300 Canadian dollars. I will pay the shipping of your books to me here in Toronto. What that means is, uh, yeah, once you do the submission form on my mm -hmm. website, I will contact you with instructions. And basically, you have to pack your books up. You've got to give me the dimensions of the book and the weight of the books. And of course, your contact info. And I will generate a shipping label, which I will send to you through PDF. And then you pop your, you go to your local FedEx, you give it over to them and they'll deliver your books right to me. And okay, hold, uh, hold on, yeah. hold on. I've got, uh, I'm going to get my books together right now. Yeah, okay, there you I've go. Got, I've been talking about like streamlining your, your comic book collecting processes. I absolutely love the idea. And, you know, you, you mentioned earlier too, like you want to make sure that you're working on books that are worth your while and that, that can be improved in terms of condition and value for your customers. And so it makes sense to kind of uh, set those minimums. I love it. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, thank you. Uh, oh. that's, that's what I'll say right now. I can't wait to use it. Well, that's great. Again, it's, it's, it's gotta be a minimum. Obviously it has to be a minimum of a $300 right. submission. Now that could be two or three books. If you, if you're using high, if you're sending higher sure. value books, you could get to that $300 very fast. And that's Canadian, oh. by the way, not 300 us. So if it's 300 Canadian, you're looking right. to knock about 20, 20, 30% off of that for, yeah. for my American yeah, clients. Right. Like I said, uh, all I can say right now is thank you for that. That no has problem. been something that I, I have just been struggling with it. And, and like I mentioned too, it, the struggle is more because I don't have visibility on your side. And right. that's where I have had a difficult time because I don't want to make things difficult for you. To me, I, uh, I, I <laughs> it's a weird analogy, but hear me out. Okay. Uh, it's, it's the equivalent of getting a haircut. If when I go to get a haircut, uh, mm -hmm. I I want to be very pleasant and nice to the stylist sure. whoever's cutting my hair because if I make things difficult on them, then <laughs> I will have scissors in the side of my <laughs> head right. and, I'll, and I'll be bleeding out. So I, I think of it the same way. I want to make your life easier. You're <laughs> going through the trouble of spending the time with my comics. And I think that this is a win for both sides. And actually speak, your last order you sent actually went through UPS, I believe. Right. And, and it was, yeah. yeah, they're, 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 they're ding dongs. They really are ding dongs. And it took about an extra three days for your books to come to me because they were okay. trying to get me to use their brokerage service. And I have my own, I use a different brokerage service. So when I finally told them to use my broker, it, it, the books arrived the next day. So what I'm also going to do with this, when I send out that, uh, that shipping label, I'm also going to send out something you can slap on the side of, your, of the box, which will tell customs to send it through my broker. So it'll go through my broker automatically. So it'll Fantastic. be quick and easy. And, and I, you know what? I got to pay for that. And that's fine. I don't care. I want to make it easier for our, uh, out of province, out of, you know, long, I guess, long distance customers. And I want to get more customers. I want to, I want to bring more people into the family here. So um, yeah. Amazing. Hopefully it'll work out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for that. I, I cannot no wait. Uh, I, I'm going to get a submission together yeah. uh, very soon. So thank you for that. Uh, that's fantastic. I cannot wait to use that service and try it right. out. Uh, amazing. But now I think it is time that you show me yours. What? And, and well, ho hold on. <laughs> what I mean is, uh, show me yours. Is, <laughs> <laughs> well, Did I uh, you never show? know. I mean, it, I, I guess maybe I should make a dealer's choice and see what you want to show. But, but no, I was interested to know if you, you've seen a lot of books, you've bought a lot of books. You're also yep. a collector. Is yes. there a book in your collection that uh, means something special to you? I don't think the book means something special to me. I have some books that were given to me, given to me by my father, but they're packed away, so I couldn't grab them. But this one was kind of, well, I'll just show it to you first. I go, I pulled this one out here, right? Everyone knows it, of oh, course. Wow. Fantastic Four, number one. Love it. Yep. I got. I picked up this book when I first started pressing, and the the reason why I thought it was a cool book to share was because it was it belonged to a client of mine. It was a dealer, 
And I pressed the book. I wasn't planning on buying the book. You know, it was, um, he was going to sell it somewhere else. So the book was finished. It was raw, obviously. He came to pick up the book. I gave him his bill and he said, do you want to put the bill towards any of my books? And I looked and I said, well, there's a fantastic 401. I, and then anyway, we made a quick deal, abracadabra. Wow. And the reason I say this is because I never thought in a million years I'd own a fantastic four number one. And yeah. from that time, that was going back several years, I've picked up pretty much all the Marvel keys. The Hulk one, I've got the AF-15, the two AF-15s now. I've got a, a bunch. And a lot of guys will come and they'll come to the shop and they'll see big books or they'll they'll say, I really want to get an amazing spider number one. I'll never be able to afford it. I'm saying, never say never. Never. I Honestly, I am not a millionaire, right? And, you know, I, I'm a middle-class dude. But if you, this hobby, if you, if you play the cards right and you do a bit of buying and selling, the hobby can actually pay for itself. And, and, and that's how I was, had been able to buy all of these keys um, is just raising money through uh, buying books, collections, selling, flipping, whatever you want to call it, and putting that money aside and then hiding it. And then when a deal comes out, I, I pick up one, you know, and, and yeah, so I've been able to get them all now. And, and so it is possible. Don't say it's not pot. I don't want people to say, no, I can never, I'll never get that book. Baloney. You can get that book. I got mine. So yeah, you can. Great story. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And just to keep you on your toes even more. Oh, geez. We're going to get into some rapid fire. Mm. And here we go. Um, You're going to have to choose between two options and we're going to move quickly. Here we go. 9.8 or 9.9. 10. No, 9.8. 9.8. 9.8. Black cat or cat woman? Black cat. And I don't know what context, but I'll, I'll let you decide. Mold or foxing? Foxing. Foxing all day long. And then this in terms of presses. Clamshell or swivel? Clamshell. Nice. <clears throat> For your media consumption, mm-hmm. at home streaming or an in-person movie? In-person movie theater all day long. And last but not least, baseball or hockey? Hockey. Come on. Of course, I need that. It's hockey. Ah, uh, well, Kevin. Hockey. Kevin, we're out of time. All right, uh, and, and we're in the end game. We're in the end game now. I just wanted to say what an absolute uh, pleasure it was having you uh, here. Um, I, I can't thank you enough. I, I know you're super busy. Uh, you ah. have uh, it's just a well-established presence, and I've mentioned this to you before. And that there is a respect for what you and and your team does, uh, Thank you. but but really also more than that, uh, just you as a person, as a collector, what you're doing for the hobby, the information that you share with folks, and the time that you gave to me and my audience here uh, with this session, and I really appreciate it very much. Um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, let folks know how they can get in touch with you or submit books to you. Yeah, no problem. Sure. If you want to get in touch with me, uh, of course, the first place to start is www.comicdoctor.com. Uh, from there, you go to the contact uh, tab there and you can use a one eight 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 number for long distance. If you don't want to spend long distance money on me, you can just use my one eight eight number. Of course, you can email. Uh, there's also a number there, uh, my my 905-449 number. You can just text me direct. It goes right to my phone and we can, and texting's actually pretty darn good. Um, of course, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube. I can see it scrolling down there. Instagram, I'm not as active as I should be, but I'm going to try to get better, I promise. And, and yeah, it's pretty much it. And never, ever hesitate to call if you have any questions. You don't have to submit anything. Just if you have any questions about comics or comic pressing or any of that sort of thing. Actually, Every Tuesday at 8.30 on my YouTube channel. If you come to the YouTube channel, subscribe. You can ask me questions directly right there. It doesn't cost a darn thing. Just jump on in and join the conversation. Yeah, fantastic. I I love joining. I love the interaction. You're always gracious enough to spend some time with the chat and uh, answer questions. And and it's it's a like I said, it's a great way to get to know your presser. Fantastic. And I know you're starting uh, having some guests on and really expanding the channel. I'm excited to see where that goes for you. Oh, I got a big one coming up soon. Another, another, another good series of guests, but it may take some maneuvering, but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We'll get you back too soon. Hey, you got to come on over. I would love that. That's well, awesome. Kevin, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Uh, best of luck and we'll be in touch. I can't wait to use that new service for uh, U.S. customers. But you. you got it. Thank you for having me. All right, there he was, the comic doctor, Kevin. I- I've been a customer of his, super great guy. Love his team and what he's doing there. Thank you for watching, happy collecting, and see you next time.